My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Ignatus University. Um, I don't intend to break the decorum, would continue to ascend in a moment. I just needed you to prepare your hearts. In the next one hour, I will be bringing us the word of the Lord. And then we will take our time to pray. One of the crises we have in the body is that there are so many revelations, but there are few people who are engaging God and the spirit realm literally. So we we'll take that privilege tonight to press into God as we trust Him for a supply of His Spirit. We are expectant tonight. Just lift your hands toward heaven. Just whisper something to the Lord very briefly from the depths of your heart. You are expecting an encounter tonight. The reason we share the word of the Lord is not primarily to educate people. The reason we share the word of the Lord is because the word of God is the gateway into the realms of the supernatural. There are not too many strategies that are captured in the crucible of the divine for betting dimensions in the spiritual realm. The word of the Lord is one of the most potent infrastructure that the Lord reveals to us in the Holy Writ for bringing a connection and a gangway between the natural realm and the supernatural. And so every time we have the privilege of interfacing the realm of the divine, we take advantage of the provisions of the word of God. Because those utterances are not primarily designed for educating. Jesus said, the words that I speak, he said, they are spirit, they are life. Although education can be factored into the utterance of God, but beyond education, God is bringing you into an experience of the divine. So that you can have participatory expectation, participatory experience, and become like unto the one that you hear. And that is why when people hear God, that they become more like Him. It is the sign that they heard the voice of the monarch of Zion. Tonight we want to look into the provisions of scriptures and find out what the Lord emphasizes as touching His glory. As pertaining our generation and our time. Can you lift up your voices tonight? Just in case you have an expectation. I have not come primarily to educate you tonight. I have come to open a portal in the spirit realm for those whose heart will be open, who can do business in deep waters. I trust God that you will not be distracted. You reign, you ancient science king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Ah, eh. Yeah.
the reason we wash it. It's not because we want to get emotions. These matters have nothing to do with emotions. Emotions can participate. But you see, as important as words are, there are places where words no longer survive. So you just chant. You just chant. You just ventilate your spirit. So the Bible said that 20 and 4 elders, they fell on the ground. They casted their crowns. You know, at that point, they have no utterance anymore. They just say, holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 Like fire, like the rain, let your glory pour. Like fire, like the rain, let it pour. Like fire, like fire, like the rain, let your glory to keep it calm for a moment. Just keep it calm. It's not all the time you begin the religious thing. Sometimes just allow your spirit to flow. Just allow your spirit. See, there's a connection that is from the spirit of man to the spirit of God. It bycots the mind. It bycots the emotion. You just touch it. You know, sometimes you are carried away by the religious rounds. So the moment you begin to do like this, I know what to do to throw all of you down, but you may not touch God. You know, sometimes when the voltage is too high, the wire melts. That the wire melted does not mean there is a transfer of current. The wire does not have the capacity to contain. So when you begin to grow in maturity, sometimes you know how to manage the power of God so that something can enter the people and they don't just. Like the rain, let your glory reform. Like fire, like the rain, let it fall. Stick your hands to heaven. Like fire, like the rain, let your glory fall. Like fire, like the rain, let it fall. Like fire. Worship the Lord. Thank you, precious Father, for this privilege that we have to gather together again, Lord, under your presence, under the canopy of your glory. Father, we ask that tonight, beyond the euphoria of the presence, there be a communication of essence and life, so that as we depart, we will sustain the capacity to carry your presence and your glory with us. And that we will gain the transformation that is required of us. The alignment patterns that is required of us. A revelation portal that is required in order to be able to affect the foundations of our territory and to bring to pass your counsel your eternal counsel so that your will and your purpose will find expression eternally in our domain. In every one of us, we gain relevance in time and in eternity. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. You may be seated.
God bless you. I'll share with us in the next one hour. And then I will release the power of God and allow you under that presence. At any time the Lord finishes with you, you go. Glory be to God. At any time the Lord finishes with you, then you can leave. But let me bring us instructions by the Spirit of God that will help us. In studying the scriptures, I began to look at the life of the patriarchs. I wanted to find out the things that they taught in God that made them so eternally relevant. And the first thing that came on me was that these men were not called patriarchs because they came first. These men were not called patriarchs because they were born in the first part of civilization and time. Because when the patriarchs were listed, you would be amazed that many persons that were born in the first generations were not numbered. When the Bible began to give the chronology of the patriarchs and the elders of faith that moved the hand of God and all had the foundations of civilization, he did not give the course to the men that lived there. So it is probably the book of Hebrews chapter 1. When he spoke about the fathers, the name of Abraham was not there. So they are not patriarchs because they were born first. They are patriarchs because they invented dimensions in God that became institutions and pathways that others followed. And their lives became windows and vents through which the possibilities of God that were locked to the eternities of heaven were revealed among men. So I wanted to understand how they learned God, how they studied God, how they understood the ways of God, and how they walked with God and became so relevant. When you study the lives of this man, then their life became a revelation of that which the Spirit had in the heart, in eternity before he became the protocol of the nation. By what means we today travel into the hand of God in order to substantiate policy statements that were not all had on the face of the earth? Men of ageless aeons came and they had contact with the divine spirit of the Father, and they were able to fulfill that which God wanted to do. And they knew those patterns on the entrance to the degree that God himself called it. The Bible said concerning Abraham that God called witness that he was righteous. What did this guy walk into so much in God that the lifestyle, the pathways, the patterns that his life revealed was not a testimony of the lips of men. It was God himself that had to come down from his hallowed chambers in Zion and say, this one is a righteous man. The patterns, the counsels, they walked into wisdom, they walked into pathways of glory and they apprehended dimensions. The things we do today are actually the portals that this man created. It was the life of Abel that revealed to us that the only way a mortal man could call the spirit was sacrifice. It was Abel that revealed to humankind that on the economy of spiritual entities, the economy of spiritual living, love was not an emotional thing, love was sacrifice. So the Bible records to the life of Abel, it said, Abel provided the more excellent sacrifice that came. And when Jesus came many years later, and began to give us the relation and perspective of the law of it. He said it will not be a good commandment. So the word love that Jesus will go to in the dimensions of love that was approved by spiritual entities was the way of sacrifice. So the life of Abel was a process that revealed the revelation of love in the spirit. So every time you are able to manifest and touch the dimensions of love, you must interact with the gangway that Abel's life created. So Abel became the patriarch of love became the progenitor of what love means in the spirit realm. So you can never experience the love of God or manifest the dimensions of the love of God without making contact with the life and the essence of Abel. Abel's life is a portrait that you did what love means in the spirit. How do these men thank God and walk with so much depth? Today, Christianity for us has become an ability that will be done with the help of the Holy Ghost. So somebody can be a believer because he read scriptures and he memorized them. Now there is nothing wrong in reading and memorizing scriptures, but until the Holy Ghost from those letters, there will be no animation of their death. How did this men in their days the scriptures are not written? But when they lived and left this world and the scriptures were written, they think that their life and they have become the writings of scriptures. And the Bible said, we should look up to them. 
said the things that were written at all time. Romans 18 verse 4. He said they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures will happen. How did these men live their lives that their life was able to reveal what God wanted to do in time? It is not the way to speak. We were men that do business in the realms of the world. It was no one that revealed to us the meaning of service. <laughs> you know, as I'm preaching now, I can come up here, coordinate myself, I read all the scriptures, and then I come to talk repetitiously. And then I think I've served the Lord. Maybe I even inspire the people and touch their emotional cause, and they are falling, crying. But when the archives of heaven are open, and the portraits of my score are revealed, discover that I will not fall to 10 to 100. The only way my service can be approved is if I give or deliver my service consistent with the path that Noah created. It was Noah that revealed to us that in the economy of the divine, service is reverent. Service is not necessarily an act, it is a reverence that comes and flows out of the heart of man. So when God spoke to Noah, he knew my reverence. And that is a reverence that was calculated on the economy of the So if I come here to preach the gospel, and I don't preach it with fear and trembling, no matter how intelligent the believer is, it will not pass the taste of the mortars. How did this man find so much meaning in God? That's the reason they are so They did this mess in glory. In glory. Ah, I don't have time to talk to us about the meaning of the Shakespeare. I just want to point and emphasize this in me because of what I have passed in your territory. I don't have time. But if you don't know these things, your life will not turn. You may breathe oxygen for 50 years, for 80 years, and then you think you are relevant until the day of the day of the soul. Then you understand that the life of Jesus for 33 years is more important than the life of the Jesus for 969 years. Because the economy of life is not just the man, it's called the reality. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father who was seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father who was seated on the throne. What is service? The reverence of God demonstrated through obedience, revealed by the life of Noah. Most of us are in church, we are doing so much for God. Men without scriptures, without instructions, they demonstrated lifestyles that God himself could not do without. Every time Jesus taught, the teachings of Jesus was consistent with the life of his life. No wonder in our days we are going in number, but there's no problem. They talk of death, how about we can not do it? They talk of 50,000 people. The same members of the church in all of the strata of human death. They talk of the children, the second is the last. They talk of the people who can't be born on the floor, but the moment we meet, Everything we do, all of us are what we are doing is instant. That people will just serve God and the pagans will look at them and say, Look, this one is like that man called Christ. We may not have read about him, but when we see their lives, their life is a revelation of that man. They may not be him, but whatever it is that made that man what he is, is the same thing working in this man. So when you see Christians, they are like a mass production of an original called Jesus. They didn't go about telling people we are Christians. They did the same thing, you people who are Christ. When was the last time they pointed you, fellowship president, and said you are like Jesus? I don't have time to talk to you about the Shakaina tonight. But I want to pick an emphasis this evening. 
and I will build on it for the next 40 minutes. And for those of you that the Lord will have spoken to your heart, I will talk to you to what God is doing. Because God is raising and kind. God is raising and kind. And in this generation, until you are a part of that family and you take your rank, you will not be relevant with God. Every dispensation affects you that the Lord does for our dispensation. God is raising and kind. Because as the church migrates to the end, it moves from fellowship to amidigon. That's why we are heading towards warfare. And that's why our service in the kingdom is characterized with brutality. We are learning the ways of battle, and men will be quick on the left and the right, so that you can become swift like the eagles. I will show you the things that will make you tonight. That's the emphasis I want to remove from the Shakina doctrine tonight. You know, the word Shakina is not in the Bible. It's not a biblical terminology. It is a character God that only that word can define that made the elders made it to become part of biblical literacy. Because there were certain dimensions of God that the word that can define it was not in scripture. So they needed to add it just like the Trinity. When you study the mystery of the three in one, there is no word in scripture that can define it. So in order to give it a context, they now call the word Trinity. Are you there now? The word Shakina is not in the Bible. But it was included because of what it stood for. Because we began to see the visible manifestation of God created in nature. And there was no way they could catch it in the world. So they now discovered that the only way that dimension could be expressed is to give it a terminology that gives the relation to its essence. So they invoke the word Shakina. So every time we are talking about the visible manifestation of the glory of God, we need to know what it means for every dispensation. There was a time when it was enough for that word to be a visible cloud. But when we are going to the cloud, it's no longer enough. So that I don't. Sometimes I have too much body that it becomes difficult for me to teach. Now we are going, brother. A cloud is no longer enough. And I will show you how that in every dispensation, the emphasis of God migrated and the manifestation of God was modified to be consistent with that dispensation. I have seen the cloud of glory appear in my meetings at least three times. I was in Lagos, in around the class conference, and he laid hands on me and said, We will walk in the glory. And many, times, many years later, I began to move in the spirit, and most times, visible white clouds came into the building. It happened, the last, the other one happened in a local place, in a place called Kasinala. I just came from where this happened, my friend said, Help me. I said, Okay, no trouble. And as we were ministering, the place was saturated with smoke. And the guy was like, the, the generator is gone. What's happening? And then he ran outside and discovered the generator was far. He said, okay, maybe something is gone. And then he checked, checked. Nothing was happening. And then he heard the Lord say, can you not recognize my presence? And he knelt down and began to cry. In that sense, things were happening on their own accord. Notes, vanishing people voice. People who did not decide to have counsel on their own, they broke down the decline, and that way the work of the church began to come. The evil dimensions of God's manifestation. This is not a view to talk against the cloud, but I want to show you the essence of spiritual operation because we don't know you can talk it and then you can be so psyched about it. Just like the spirit anointed today is so appealing in the church. People don't. They fall down, and then even preach as few people have not fallen down the world. Meanwhile, the blessing of God is communicated in the economy of it. The manifestation is what it happens. It happens, glory to God, but that is not what we look at. What we look at is in the spirit. But nowadays, I feel that even preachers have condescended so little. I want to talk about 
from this copy of the Sapphire of the Night is the same copy of the Moon. If they thought on that, the rule of the Sapphire of the Night is fair. The reason that dominion is not part of our operation is because we have not understood the Shekinah, nor have we enforced its possibilities enough. A protocol or we have understanding of its operation. The Shekinah, the visible manifestation of the glory of God. What is the significance of the Shekinah? It's one I want to show you tonight. The dominion mandate. And if I open that dominion mandate, then we'll begin to pray. Okay. I said the Shekinah is not about the house now. Somebody is talking. So let me make some statement. Let me make some statement before I go ahead. You know, sometimes when we are talking like some people, sometimes it becomes a challenge. Well, let me make a statement because of this person that was like, ah, what is he saying? What is he saying? Then what is it? What is it? Let me explain something now. Listen. The first time the word Shekinah was invoked into scriptural writing to explain divine possibility was when the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire was revealed in Exodus as the people of God migrated out of the promised land in the book of Exodus chapter 13. That was when the word was used to define what the visible manifestation of the glory of God is. Are we together? Are we together now? That's when the first manifestation was. But as scriptures migrated forward, we understood that the manifestation of the glory of God was growing in tangibility until a point came where the Bible revealed Jesus Christ to become the visible manifestation of the glory of God. So the cloud spoke to Moses and God said, No man has spoken to me face to face but my servant Moses. And in John chapter 1, from verse 14 down, the Bible said, No man has seen the glory of God except the only begotten of the Father, seated from the Father. So Moses did not really see the visible expression of God. He spoke with the manifestation of God as a cloud, the Shekinah. And which was when Moses insisted that, Show me your glory. Remember, Moses was seeing the cloud and he was seeing the fire. But when he insisted, Show me your glory, God said, No can see me and live. He said, how be it I will put you in the cleft of the mountain. And when my glory passes, you shall see me. And the Bible said, Moses saw the back of God. So when God said he saw him face to face, the Bible was revealing to those manifestations of God. But those manifestations of God could not carry the full expression of God's essence. And here was Jesus in John chapter 14 from verse 9. Verse 8, Philip asked him, say, show off the Father. And, we would, and it will suffice us. And Jesus said, have you been with me? And you asked me to show you the Father. He said, whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. So the greatest visible manifestation of God on earth is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, said, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the Father by the prophets, including Moses, has in this last day spoken unto us by his Son, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, so the greatest revelation of the visible manifestation of God was the person of Jesus Christ. And that's why I told you that the Shekinah have moved from a cloud to a person. A cloud is no longer enough. Right now the Shekinah that we need to dominate our world is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So a man who carries the revelation of Jesus Christ is a candidate, a custodian, a bearer of the visible manifestation of the glory of God. But it's only by revelation that that dimension can operate for you. Does it mean the other dimensions of God have been truncated? No. The glory realm still works. Because even in the days of Jesus, in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 17, Luke chapter 5 verse 17, the Bible said Jesus was preaching and the power of God was present to heal. Remember, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 38, he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So Jesus carried power on his inside. But there are occasions when, when Jesus was ministering, the realm of power came. So the visible expression is still operational, but the carrier is still there. Because the, it's a migration of revelation. 
So Jesus still carried that atmosphere. Till today in our meetings, there are times when that visible expression comes. And then you see people's hair who are bad begin to grow. You see people who have lost organs begin to grow. You see growth begin to dematerialize. Because the role of the Shekinah is actually to dominate creation. That's why I told you that one of the emphasis of the Shekinah that I will reveal tonight is the domination mandate. Every time Shekinah comes, it has the power to manipulate creation. It is within the context of the Shekinah that creation can be reconstructed in order to be demonstrate the possibilities of God. So Jesus was the visible expression of the glory of God. And everyone that called Jesus is the candidate for the expression of the Shekinah. So when you move around in your campus, your focus is no longer a cloud. Your consciousness is no longer a cloud. Your consciousness now is the person on your inside. And the more you relate with that person, the more the dimensions of God flow out of you. And then you find yourself dominating your world because that's the primary of the Shekinah. The domination of creation. Bringing creation under the full expression and government of God. It's something that the believer must know. A lot don't carry Jesus tangibly. And they don't know why the circumstances of life teach them. The doctrine of the Shakina is the doctrine of the dominion of God. And everyone that carries that dimension of God has the power to alter the very visible realm of it works. That's why it's the Shakina that worked with them when they needed to command creation to come under their power. The Shekinah. Every time God dealt with creation, the Shekinah, it is called the dwelling place. The dwelling place. So the manifestation of the Shekinah makes the whole environment become an it's the dwelling place. The word means the dwelling place of God. And Jesus has become that dwelling place. Did somebody follow me? How many of you have Jesus here tonight? So you are all candidates of the glory. But how do you express it? That's where the key of dominion lies. And that's the knowledge I told you the fathers have. That's why I began by talking about the patriarchs. There's a knowledge they have that made them dominate the world. They have the knowledge of the glory of God. Our generation don't have it. Every time we are looking for an angel to appear for the war, we are looking for white clouds, we are looking for fire. And most times, some of us have seen it, but our life has not moved. Because the Shekinah is no longer a cloud, it's a person. And the degree to which you walk with that person is what will determine your domineering and domineering possibility of the earth realm. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 22, He said, The glory that you have given me. I have given to them that they may become one with us. So the possibilities that are only within the context of the divine be expressed to humankind. So the goal of God when he began to reveal his glory was actually to reveal his essence, his person, his personality. And that same dimension that Jesus carried visibly, he said he has transferred to us. Remember, the first time God told man to have dominion, the first thing God gave to man was his nature and his likeness. That's the Shekinah. The essence of God was what God committed to man. And the moment he committed his essence to man, he said, have dominion. So when man fell, Paul didn't say man fell from dominion. Paul said man fell from glory. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. He said, for all has seen short of glory. So the moment man fell, he lost dominion. Every time you find your life in struggle, it means you are not operating in glory. Because the dominion mandate was lost when man fell from glory. And Jesus wanted to bring man back to dominion. So he didn't give him dominion, he gave him glory. He said, the glory that you have given to me, I have given to anyone that can walk that glory out is a candidate for dominion. Many Christians are not taught. We don't know what to do to manifest the glory. 
So we are actually keepers of the Shekinah, but it is not visible in our lives. We are actually custodians of the glory, but it is not visible in our lives. And that is the key of our frustration. Because the key of dominion is the glory. And every time a man cannot manifest the glory, he is a candidate of frustration. You can talk all you like, you can be bold, you can be arrogant. You will think sometimes when you talk, God will be impressed. And because God is impressed, he will do something. <laughs> then God will be quiet. You will cry, wake up again. God will still be quiet. Somebody around you will die. God will be quiet. Then you wake up, you say, what is this? That's to understand that there are definite protocols that govern every spiritual operation. Including the Shekinah. The Shekinah is a person. And that person brings a government life. You want to manifest the Shekinah, then you have to obey the dictates of that government. This is the key that the patriarchs of Noah understood. So God asked for an offering. Instantly, Abel gave his best. Because he understood that the key of dominion is obedience to God's government. God asked Noah, and instantly he moved because he understood that the key of dominion is obedience to that government. Without obedience to that government, there's no Shekinah in manifestation. And I told you that in every dispensation there are definite operations of God. There was a time when God could thunder from heaven and the cloud would stand upon the mountain. He doesn't do that anymore. Now if God wants to reveal the glory, he calls Victor and says, go to Ibadan. God wants to reveal the glory. He calls Michael. He says, go to Lagos. Because the glory is now in you. Whether you can manifest it or not becomes your responsibility. So you are waiting for the glory to come upon the mountain. You are wasting your time. In fact, God is waiting for you to demonstrate the glory. And Jesus knew this. So never will you see Jesus lie down and say, God, help. Help is no longer from heaven. Help is from within. Because the Shekinah is inside. There's no help from heaven. Help is within. So you will see Jesus, the Son of God, live all kinds of life for the Shekinah to manifest. There were times when he left the crusade, he ran to the mountain. And he stayed there. That's when people are running to come and kneel down. Do you now know why you don't see men of God anywhere, everywhere? It's not because it's a show to hide yourself. It's not scarcity is relevant. That's not the idea. The idea is they have to incubate on the glory because they know the key of dominion is the ability to give expression to the glory. A believer who is everywhere has no dominion mandate. He can talk it, but he will never express it. And that's the crisis of our lives. We talk about God boldly, no manifestation. We boast about God, no manifestation. Some of us are even leaders in church. Talk about the power of God, talk things. And then when there is crisis at home, they say, man of God. And man of God will have the same experience that the one who is not man of God is having. Everything is legalistic. No vital experience. That person on your inside has a requirement. And the day you begin to conform to those requirements, that's the day your life will begin to speak. This is the life that the patriarchs of old pioneered. If you see them, you will discover that their life is a series of one level of obedience to another. One level of obedience to another. And the more they yielded to God, the more the glory broke out of them. And it looked as if nothing could withstand them. Until the Bible read, giving a testimony of them, it said, This be the man that shattered the foundations of nations. He said, They wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, they shot the mount of lion, they quenched the violence of fire. He said, In weakness they were made strong, and they put to flight the armies of the alien. What is that thing in them that gave them so much authority against nature? The glory of God. Because when the glory of God shows up, even the mountains shatter. Many Christians, many, don't know what to do in the face of trouble. And the reason is because nothing flows from the kingdom. God is not moved because you are boastful about Him. God is moved because you are yielded to Him and He can flow through you. It is the economy of the Shekinah. The key to the is the expression of the glory. But many Christians don't have it. 
you want a change of story, then you must learn how to come under the government of the Holy Spirit again. Dominion. 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 Some men yielded to this dimension so much that the Bible will say that Moses came from the present. He said he wished not that his face shone like the sun. That's a man who went to pray the way you and I pray. What is it about his prayer? The Bible will say Jesus in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2 and 3 that as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And Jesus will come down from the mountain. The disciples were struggling to cast out devils they couldn't. And Jesus just showed up. And he casted out a deaf and dumb spirit in a second. And the disciples are wondering. They are wondering, what is this? There is something he obeyed consistently until dimensions of glory flowed out of him. We live our lives the way we want. That's why there's no glory. When we see challenges, we roar. <laughs> the situations of life, they don't respond to volume. They respond to the supply of the Spirit. Get down! It is not even hearing you because another dimension. Your volume is in the visible dimension. What can travel into the unseen realm, you don't have it. And then you scream when you waste the energy that you have used to run away. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my brother, sometimes the little energy you have is to run. <laughs> Hope you know the Bible said you escaped. They escaped. <laughs> Don't waste the energy for running in trying to make a point where you have no hope. Hey, hey! And then, uh, they put themselves in trouble. Ah, you don't mind me. I'm like this because of the audience you have seen. Every man that walks in the glory is a candidate of dominion. Of men like Bruce Allen. <laughs> Go for his meetings, you'll be amazed. You stand like this. You see a man with bad hair, the hair will grow. Things that defy the anointing, they happen on their own accord. Some of these men, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to do unnecessary staring this night. I want to give you some, some keys. I want to give you keys that you will use. <laughs> a man sat down, the way you are worshipping a while ago, they sat down, they were worshipping, playing guitar like this. The grass began to go. Grass. That takes years to grow. Nature, nature, life began to enter nature, life. Grass began to grow, trees began to ripen. Fruits began to appear on trees and were ripening. <laughs> the glory, the visible manifestation of God, they had the power to tame nature and cause nature to conform with the borderlines of the will of God. Christ is in your life that will never bow. If you know what to do to activate the Shekinah, you will be amazed that you become a master over the circumstances of your life. Master! Things will happen on their own accord around you. But there is a protocol. That's what I want to show you tonight. And when you show people what they should practice, you don't get them emotional. You know, I asked the president, I said, do you want me to make it a revival meeting or I should instruct the people? He said, instruct the people and people. Those things that you refuse to do every day, those are the things I want to tell you. That if you don't do them, you will not dominate in this life. Because everybody that ever dominated, they live their lives like that. And that's one of the most potent teachings that the Holy Ghost will give every believer. All of us will memorize it. All of us will study doctrine. All of us will listen to exhortation. But there's one kind of Bible study called transformational Bible study. Only the Holy Ghost teaches that one. And he teaches it circumstantially. The Bible said you will go through the water, you will not be drowned. That's the Bible study. He said you will go through the fire, you will not be born. When the Holy Ghost wants to teach you transformational doctrine, he carries you through circumstances. He teaches you through the activities that are weaved into your everyday living. And in those activities, you begin to hear the voice of God. And as you align with the voice of God, the dimensions of God that are consistent in dealing with those activities flow out of you. 
That's why a lot of people will talk about mercy, they will read it, but they will not know it. Some will talk about faith, they will read it, they will not know it. Some will talk about love, they will never know it. Because when you study it, the Holy Ghost will teach again. The Holy Ghost is the one that communicates life by experience. He's the animator of the Word of God. The Word of God will never come alive until the breath of the Holy Ghost comes upon it. And when the Holy Ghost does that, He does it by government. The Bible said, I have many things to tell you now. John 16, 13, He said, but you cannot receive it. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come? That was the Word. What you carry in your spirit now. But He said, that alone can bring you into experience. He said, when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. Only the Holy Ghost sustained the technology in the Godhead for bringing men into the experience of the dimensions of God. That's why we do a lot of study, a lot of activity, but we don't have experience because we are not under the government of the Holy Spirit. Most believers know about the Holy Ghost, they don't know Him. Most talk about Him, they never obey Him. That's why we are where we are. And there will be a change in our lives and in our circumstances, then we must come under the literal government of the Holy Spirit. And this type is not a function of big language. The Holy Ghost speaks to you in the language you understand. So if it's only Pidgin English you know, every rema you receive will be in Pidgin English. You may not be able to see it in the Bible, but you will hear it, you can't deny it. If it's only Yoruba you know, you will hear all those rema in Yoruba. If it's only any language at any level, God can raise you from there. Because even the Bible we teach in English was not written in English. The Rema. It flows unto men that come under government. And there's a way the Holy Ghost teaches. The first way the Holy Ghost teaches is by commandments. Tell somebody commandments. 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 Have you been to that point before where you were not fasting, you were not doing anything, but you woke up and the Holy Ghost said, Don't eat. How many of you have been there? How many of you violated it? See, 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 this, see, this. I violated many times. <laughs> I didn't know that that was the path to my growth. I thought the path to my growth was to gather all the doctrine that are scarce and are rare. So I read about people that have knowledge. And I read things that others... So when I come out, I'll pop it my hand and then I'll be explaining those things to them, deep things. And the more I explain, the more my life became a contradiction of those things. I didn't know that the path to glory was actually the walking with the Holy Spirit. Coming under His tutelage and bringing your neck down and bearing his yoke. So we said many spiritual things, but we were carnal people. We knew we were dying. Our soul was empty. The dimension of God that could tame the challenges of life, we never experienced it. We thought we would touch it by reading. We thought we would touch it by attending meetings. We attended many meetings and we were dry. Until the Holy Ghost began to speak and we began to obey it. Abraham was destined to be the father of faith. The law and the protocol of salvation was supposed to flow out of Abraham's relationship with God. Without Abraham coming into vital relationship with God, there was ability of salvation. Abraham was actually the gate that God assigned to humanity to bet salvation and to bring its possibility to human experience. But God had spoken to Abraham and he never obeyed. And for those years that Abraham disobeyed God, salvation was locked in heaven. Stephen came and was given a message that God had spoken to Abraham in the halls of the Chaldees. But Abraham never moved. He was still with his father because he was enjoying the succor of family life. How many of you are there? God speaks for the succor of life, the succor of friendship, the succor of relationship, the pledges of life kept you there. And then you are hoping that one day you become this. You are a clown. It doesn't happen like that. We grow in this kingdom. We grow. And we grow by obeying. Following the structure until we walk into our inheritance. When Abraham realized it, his utterance is changed. And his testimony was that he was looking for a city that had a foundation whose builder and maker was God. 
at that point he realized that for him to enter into his inheritance he needed to follow the voice of the invincible because his inheritance was not with him it was in the place that he will be shown so he began to follow the commandments after his father carried them to Haran and died they became real to him you know some of you will continue with your pampering and those friends until things go wrong and that friendship can no longer work that's when you will turn to obey God but what you don't know is that you would have wasted 15 years of your life that thing you should have done when you were 15 you are entering at the age of 40 and you say God is faithful look back and check the calendar of heaven what you are doing at the age of 40 was the thing that was written concerning you at the age of 12 at the age of 12 Jesus was asking the doctors of the law question they didn't know it he was the one answering them it would have been for Jesus not to follow God closely and do that same thing at the age of 30. And then you call it a breakthrough. You never call something a breakthrough until you check its reading from heaven. Because what is happening in your life now that you are celebrating, if you are not careful, is what was written concerning you 10 years. That, that's 10 years of your life you are living now. So you are in the past. Hope you know that when Moses came to save the Israelites, their salvation was unlocked in heaven 30 years before Moses came. So when they were celebrating salvation, they were already behind the calendar from heaven. Because their salvation had come 30 years ago. Moses was only not ready. So some of the things you are doing now, what you don't know is that you were supposed to do it 5 years ago. And if you don't wake up now, some of the things you are supposed to do 10 years ago, do now, you may do it 10 years later. This is why we press into God that there is nothing else to do in this life. Because in this realm, we are not called to be creative. We are called to be yielded. And the more we yield, the more our life will be a manifestation of the story that God is telling from heaven. There are things that God in every stage of your life. Every stage. Jesus' life revealed enough of it. Every step he took, he said that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet. That if at the age of 15 there was something written about you. At the age of 20 there was something written about you. By the economy of mercy, there is a possibility of acceleration. To walk into things that were lost. You know the Bible said the year that the canker worm has eaten. The year that the caterpillar worm, the palmer worm has eaten. He said God can restore. That's the economy of mercy. The economy of mercy works in two ways. One is by speed. Two is by restoration. So either God lays hands on you and then you move. He said the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab. So something can come upon your life and make you move a step that you have not been able to take in 10 years. It's the economy of mercy. And God can make things happen. And the protocol of nature can be altered, reordered, in order to make things work for you. It's the economy of mercy. But you don't rely on it every time because God is not so moved by altering things through his sovereignty. He wants you to walk by faith. And to walk by faith, you must grow in the spirit. And one of the ways to do it is by obedience. When God begins to command, know that the light of your destiny has been activated. If you mistake and make the error of not obeying those commandments, the window that is opened over your life will shut. And it is when that circle comes again that those same commandments will come. That's why most of you hear past, past, and then you violate it for three months. The next time you hear past is after three years. You will think uh, maybe it's because I heard this message. No, that's when that window opens. It's called times and seasons. Commandments come from heaven according to the schedule of that calendar times and seasons. When a season over your life comes, then God begins to track it and abandon. He didn't speak to Abraham. The only time he spoke to Abraham was to the Chaldees. It was when Abraham woke up in Haran and began to obey that God began to walk with him. So I always tell people that spirits walk when men become committed. It is the point of covenant that is the activator of spiritual partnership. But a lot of people don't understand it. He spoke to Abraham many years when he was in the house of the Chaldees. But when God began to walk with Abraham was when Abraham decided to obey. And Abraham's obedience began in Haran. In Haran. And God began to speak. There are many things God has for you that will never manifest, including the glory, unless you begin to respond to the commandments of God. And when a man begins to respond to the commandments of God, that time God can teach him. You know, spiritual education is a very expensive commodity. Ah. In order to educate a man, spiritual substances are very expensive. God doesn't waste it. 
there are many things you will never know unless you begin to obey. Because God will not waste his substances. When God sees that a man has begun to obey commandments, then God begins to teach. And God doesn't teach. <laughs> the teachings of God sometimes are strange. Most times, the teachings of God come in forms of bodies. Apostle was teaching us, and he was using a scripture to explain and typify how the teachings of God come. I'm saying these things like this so that some of you who are already working with God, some of you who are already having these experiences, we know where you are in the calendar of your destiny. Some of you are at the level of instruction, but you are not obeying. You think God will forgive. Yes, He will forgive, but your life will be wasted. And you don't know. Maybe the quota of grace that is upon your life is enough to cover five generations. So if you waste that grace, the next time God will supply is after five generations. Because as far as heaven was concerned, what was provided covers five generations. This is what men are not taught. That's why you see some, some people, some frustrated, and you wonder whether they alive. If God is merciful, how can these people be like this? Maybe the person that God gave the portion of their grace pondered it. Did you not read what, what, what you said? He said, Peter, Peter, Satan desires to have you, to seek you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. He said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. That means if Peter fail, the brethren will fail. And there was nothing Jesus did about the brethren. All he did was about Peter. Because it was part of the grace upon Peter to strengthen the brethren. If Peter doesn't recover, the brethren is gone. So many times you walk in rebellion, be conscious, because you may just be negotiating the destiny of five generations after you. You think it's about pleasure. When Adam bargained our destiny, he didn't know that it was humankind he was bargaining. And God, God could not do anything after many generations. Do you know how many people went to hell? You will not have an idea. The Bible said Jesus had to go to hell to preach to some. And some could not repent. Because Adam thought it was about pleasure. Thought it was about fruit. I want to enjoy apple. He called you on Friday and said, There is this club. Ah, things are happening. And you think it's about nice club. You don't know that your destiny is this back in. Every time you disobey God, you are being wicked. Because you are trading the destiny of many generations. Innocent people after you are the people who are wasting their destinies. I can show you from scriptures men that disobeyed God and violated the possibility of many after them because it's a protocol of creation. When God wants to do business with a man and cause him to walk in dominion by glory, he begins with commandments. These commandments are not the ten commandments in the Bible, they are peculiar to you because the Bible says, Daring. Is the righteousness of God be from faith to faith. So there's a place you get to that God will tell you, pray every morning for Potakot. That's not a doctrine. That's life. If you violate that protocol, there are many things God would have done in Potakot that can't happen. But that sin will be recorded against you. So Samuel said, I will not sin against the Lord by not praying for you. Talking about the Israelites. They were trying to keep the laws of Moses. Samuel had migrated. There he's walking in intimacy. For him, that one is not an issue. What was an issue for him was the law that God gave him. He said he should intercede and cause Israel to stand. And today, that's the economy in God. The Bible said the papyrus is one of you. A born servant of Christ. Laboring perfectly for you in prayer that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So the reason the church in, Col in, Col in Colossae was standing right was because a papyrus was praying. The same law that God gave Samuel, a papyrus was walking in that order. Obedience. Commandments. The first key in walking the possibility of dominion. I told you the Shekinah is no longer a cloud. The Shekinah is now a person. And the way the Shekinah manifests now is the domination of nature. The enforcement of the will of God. The expression of the counsel of God on the face of the earth. And anyone who truly walks in the Shekinah, he has the ability to enforce the government of God over his territory. That's a man that can come into his family and shut darkness down. 
It doesn't matter how many years it has been happening. He's working in another economy. And by that economy, he can bring that possibility to his family. So many are barren. He comes and he says, enough is enough. If truly those dimensions walk through him, there will be dominion. And that dimension of Hades will be shut down. The Shekinah. The manifestation of God. The visible expression of God's essence. Today is tabernacle in hell. And very few men can manifest it. The key to manifesting one is the commandments of God. A man who hears and obeys the commandment of God is a carrier and a manifesto of the Shekinah. This is why many of us are talking, but very few have results. Because they don't understand the key of obedience. They don't understand. It's not about what you know. It's about what you can communicate because of what you are yielded to. The other is to understand what spirituality is. Spirituality for him is not a uh, read this book, read that book, and try to behave like this in a certain way. No. Spirituality for him is a relationship with the spirit. And he knows he can never violate the law of that spirit. So the guy can come and do anything with you, but if that spirit for the next 30 days pray in the night or chant, chant between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., that happiness will not miss it by one second. You will see him if it means chewing cola not from 12, so that by one he begins to chant, he will do it for 30 days. Faithfulness is one of the greatest expressions of spiritual men. They understand that commitment to the commandments of God are too important. Violation too grievous. Spirituality is not come to church and act in a certain way. You walk like this, you do like this, and we carry nothing. Jesus was mingling with people in the market. People were thronging in here. Power was moving. Now we come, we need to create an atmosphere. <laughs> If you are to create an atmosphere every time power must move, who will carry the gospel to the market? Where there will never be an atmosphere. How can the gospel enter the governmental corridor? Who will create the atmosphere there? This has nothing to do with violating or talking against it. But there is more in God. We are carriers of the glory. And everywhere we go we should demonstrate it. But the key is not a kind of song that we lift. The key is not with the keyboardist. The key is obedience to the commandments of the Spirit that reveals those dimensions. Jesus obeyed the Holy Ghost so much that even when he died, the Bible said he was resurrected by the glory of the Father. That means the Holy Ghost within, for Jesus' case, was the Shekinah. And in your own case, the government of Jesus in your soul is your Shekinah. The degree to which you subscribe to that government is that degree of dominion that you will experience. But many never. Commandments. Commandments. This is where Christianity gets boring. When we come, we say, praise and worship. Oh, oh, oh people drop everywhere. We say, I love you, Lord. But when we say commandment, you discover that we are few that understand that language. Look around. Commandments. If you ask a believer, when was the last time God spoke to you, he, he or she may not remember. What was the last thing God told you? They will not remember. And they say they are growing. What, how, what, where are you? From where to where are you growing? When the instructions of God for you are the compass of navigation, from what unto what are you growing? Commandments. The fathers of faith carried it as if it was their lives. They carried it like this because they knew everything depended on it. If they can't obey, they will go and sleep in the presence and cry for months so that their ability can be punished because that's the key to dominion. Commandments. Commandments. You want to do business with the Spirit of God? You must. It's not you should or you, you can or you will. You must obey His commandments. It's the key. Jesus will come to John the Baptist and say, Suffer it to be so for now. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. This matter is non-negotiable. It's not something you come and reason out. We don't reason out this matter. This matter is a matter of must. So whether we like it or not, we must obey. 
This is how men become mighty in the kingdom. The commandments of the spirit. And then when they hear those commandments and begin to submit, then God, God begins to allow circumstances, orchestrate circumstances to chisel him. Hey. I want to fly now. Come and give. Let me know how many minutes I have. I want to fly. I want to fly now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You have not heard anything at least at this time. You have heard about commandment. You know, <laughs> there's a level you walk with God so that you know your tools. You know your tools. So you can wear them when you want. Yes. I want to fly now. How many minutes do we have more? Sorry? Ah, okay, I have time. I still have some time. <laughs> Let me instruct a bit more. <laughs> you know, hmm, this body dimension, hear it. There are some of you here that there are some sets of clothes that God says don't wear again. Every time you wear it, you lose your peace. You now do like this. You act. You are trying to shut the voice. You are just doing. You are acting fast, and then you go out as if you are not hearing. The Holy Ghost is screaming with a trumpet. A trumpet is on your ear. No, no, no. You want to be relevant in this kingdom? That's where it will begin from. Your spiritual growth begins from the point of your instruction. Some of you prayer. And then you go and waste yourself, come back in the night. And then the Holy Ghost will always come. <laughs> you know, the Bible said He will guide you into all truth. The man is not intimidated by your tiredness. He's not intimidated by your acting as if you didn't hear. He's not intimidated even by your anger. There are some people that come. I say, God, what's the meaning of this? When you finish working, then the Holy Ghost will come again and say, um, 30 days fast. <laughs> no! Why? Why? Why you rake, 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 you cry as you wake up? And see this pastor. <laughs> it's not intimidating. See, if Christianity were so hard, then it would not be taught to babes. What we are called to teach is meant even for children. So there has to be a language that everybody can understand. That's why your instructions to you at your level to grow you to where you should be. It has nothing to do with whether you are intelligent or cerebral. Those instructions sometimes they are, they are communicated through your emotion. So you may act as if you are dead, but you will feel the grief, the grievances of the Holy Spirit. Even though your ear, you have put a, you have took a wood not to hear, the Holy Ghost will now begin to talk through your emotion. You will feel it like a sting in your heart until you can't deny it anymore. This is where a lot of people fail. And this is why we are Christians, but we cannot reveal God. Because those instructions the Holy Ghost gives you, they are the channel of His manifestation. The dimension of God that can flow through you, they are the ones creating those holes, those potholes. Those are the parts where the Holy Ghost will flow through. Did you not read about Jacob? The guy kept his flesh. The angel of the Lord was fighting. He wouldn't let go. He fought for mighty money. Until the angel broke him. The moment he created that part of as a prince, thou hast been with God and has prevailed. Those areas where the Holy Ghost is hammering on and chiseling, those are the channels through which his dimensions come through. And if you refuse him from chiseling you, those things will be locked on your inside and you will be prostrated in life. Every time you allow the Holy Ghost to reconstruct you, what you are doing is that you are creating a gangway for the flow of life, for the flow of glory. Then we can see the Shekinah through you. So a man shows up, his face is like the sun. You just look at some people, you love them. You just want to hug them. You don't know what is his glory that is flowing. His glory. The, the Lord has worked so much on them. It's not because they are handsome, my brother. Carry their picture and forget about their name and look at them. You will laugh. Some of the men you celebrate, they are very ugly. Very, very ugly. But you don't know why you want to eat them up. It's glory. You just hear about them, they are happy. Some of you can't even put your own picture as profile picture. You put their picture. 
you love their face to appear more than your own. It's going. It's flowing. He said we, are, we make manifest the savour of His will. Glory. You need to go back and stay in God's presence and tell Him, Lord, what will you have me do? Because those instructions you have forgotten, the greatest blessing that will come your way is to be reminded of those instructions. That's why the greatest of them all ask one question. He said, Lord, what will you have me do? His name is Paul. And he grew so rapidly that he became the greatest of them all. Instructions, instructions. Sometimes you need to go and pray and ask God, what will you have me do? That's where our, we lose touch with Zion. That's where we lose touch. We do every other thing religiously. We come to church, we speak in tongues, we study, we do the fellowship thing, but the instruction, the instruction. And the Holy Ghost keeps hammering, hammering, until your conscience becomes dead. You can't hear that anymore. And then you have failed that class. Then he closes that syllabus. And is waiting for the next window. And when the window opens again, he comes back. Because during that window is a time for the release of mercy. And then the Holy Ghost shows up again. And I say, Peter, this matter. Peter, this matter. And you kill it for another three months. And it dies. And then you delay your growth process for many years. Some of us, the reason people died in our family is because we failed to rise. The reason people are frustrated in our family is because we failed to rise. Because we are the light in that family. But our quest for pleasure will never allow us. Our quest for lust will never allow us. That's why I told you that when you disobey God is an act of wickedness. Because you know that the destiny of many other people is locked in your bones. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something? Are you reminded of the instructions the Lord has given you that you have violated? You are reminded. So you write them down. Apostle will tell us, great meetings and meetings where we make great decisions. That's what makes the difference. Sometimes we go for meetings, we can't even preach. As you just begin to talk, you are so flooded with fire. That everywhere, lit, everybody litters everywhere. But you come back. The same people that were screaming under the fire. They chat you up three months later and they say masturbation, masturbation, masturbation. Because the glory is not there. The same people you saw that you thought God had visited them. They call you later they say they are falling again. What is it? Immorality. Immorality. There is no dominion. Because we don't know the key of the manifestation of the glory. The second key is the teaching of the Holy Ghost. One of the most potent ways the Holy Ghost teaches us is by bodies. You see, bodies may not be very clear like instructions. Bodies are like momentary distress that the Holy Ghost creates in your soul. With a desire to draw you deeper so that you can perceive of its reality. But most times, bodies are so delicate that they can vaporize. You know, it's like a pressure in your soul. It can vaporize easily. So the Holy Ghost punishes the body. A movie can vaporize it. It's not a commandment. You just feel so much pressure of God to do certain things. And then the moment, sometimes you even feel a body, the moment you eat food, the body will dissipate. For those who are very sensitive, they understand what I'm saying. There are certain bodies that come to you that you want to drink water. It's as if that it will create another order of psychological and biochemical rearrangement in your soul. And that body will diffuse. So you wait. Sometimes you want to pray, you feel like eating. But you know that if you eat that food, you can't pray anymore. That energy of prayer that came, you will diffuse it after praying. People who are not spiritual don't know these things. So they feel like praying. They wake up. They wake up. And then they remember that banana in the fridge. And then they go sit down and they eat that banana and egg. And so they can't find that prayer reading in their soul anymore. 
they try to, they don't find it. They have dissipated that body. Sometimes God wakes you up in the night. Pray now. You didn't plan to wake up. Something woke you up. And then instantly, you knew you were supposed to pray. But you now felt, okay, that's thing I uploaded on Facebook in the evening. And I checked how many likes. You want to carry it. It's as if it's a sin. You want it's as if it's a sin. You know you shouldn't open that thing at that time. And then just say, maybe five minutes. And then you open it and spend 30 minutes. And by the time you say, okay, and you drop your phone, you can't pray anymore. You have dissipated that body. That's what Paul said. That I will not prostrate the grace of God. Many prostrate spiritual investment. God drops something. They don't know what happened before that body came. Maybe the reason you receive that body is because somebody has prayed for that territory for one year that God should raise intercessors. And that night was the night of recruitment. So God picked you as one of the few intercessors he wants to raise as an answer to that prayer. But you think you just felt something. You don't know that that thing happening to you was a product of spiritual litigation of one year. How you were found faithful by ordination, only God knows. But how did you waste that spiritual resource? Because you wanted to look at Facebook for five minutes. That's why we are so unspiritual. We are very religious, but highly unspiritual. Because we don't know the redeems of the spirit. We don't understand the language of the inner life. We don't understand the economy of intrinsic divine operation. We think everything is a coincidence. But the elders have grown. They know. Even when they see a whisper, they know what it means. Elisha will pray for seven, close to seven hours. And all you will see in the cloud is a man's fist. Cloud, like a man's fist. Have you looked in the cloud before? How will you see something as tiny as a man's fist? And you say that's an answer to prayer. They have mastered the economy of God. You know that sometimes that between life and death is a whisper. And if you have not recognized that little cloud, his prayer enterprise would have been a waste. His prophetic ministry would have been bastardized that day. Because he told the king, he said, rain will come. But what we validate, what we offer, was a sign in the heaven as a man's fist. How did you understand it? They have exercised themselves. The Bible says, strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern, to discern good and evil. Many of us, our senses are not exercised because every time God releases that economy with diversity, somebody wakes up in the morning, you just know there is something wrong. You can't place it. And then you just felt a leading to fast and pray. And then your friend comes in around nine and says, oh boy, I discovered one woman here where they say chicken. And then they come with rice and beans and chicken. And the moment you open the flask, the whole aroma just came to your nose like a floor. And instantly, instantly, that transaction you carried out with the spirit that you discerned there was crisis and that you needed to wait on God for one day. A transaction you carried out. Only God knew how many angels brought that information to you. And then because you perceived the order of the rice, you decided to destroy a negotiation you have with spirits. Because we are religious, we are not spiritual. Esau will come home and see his brother cooking and for a potage, a cup of potage. You can negotiate away your best right. What will qualify you to be the inheritor of the Abrahamic blessing is predicated upon your birthright. But you think it's a momentary thing. The Bible said he was profane. He said when he cried for it later, he didn't have it. Because when you waste a spiritual resource, you may never have it again, except by mercy. Most of us don't know what goes underground before we wake up and say we want to serve God. You who before now, every Friday is as if your body is itching to go for a club. Now you want to go for BG. You think you just feel like. You don't know that something has happened in your soul. You that used to be a football fan, all of a sudden now, you lose the appetite. You want, appetite, you want to pray. 
you don't know something has happened. And then your friend comes and tells you, eh, this Champions League final, they are finished. And you go to watch one highlight, you watch another highlight, you watch another highlight. And next week, Saturday, you felt like watching football. You don't know you are destroying a structure that has been set on your soul because you don't understand the intelligence of God. This is where the teachings of God become personal and real. You may know every scripture in your head, but it's not a guarantee that you will grow in God. The Bible did not say the logos will guide you into all reality. The word of God itself is reality. What we try to do into its experience is the Holy Spirit. So it is the teaching of the Holy Spirit that makes the realm of God and the possibilities of God real. But that's what mainly about it. So when we talk about spiritual gathering, we think it's a gathering to come and do the normal routine. Those routines are very important. They define who we are. But what distinguishes us and lifts our heart in a generation is the decrease of intimacy that we have with the Holy Spirit. What will raise your horn in your generation is not the normal routine. If not, check your prayer meeting. Sometimes there are 20 of you that are consistent for 3 years. At the end of the day, only one man God announces. What's the difference? You have prayer partners. You have Bible study partners. How come it's only one God exalted? Somebody asked a question the other day. He said, where are the people that did Bible study with Kumi? They are still alive. Kumi is where he is because of his network relationship. He knows when God whispers and he follows it. So after all of them have prayed, he hears whispers, he follows. They say whisper that you and I by your name, that's what others hear. And then you don't know why all of a sudden you all started on the same line. The next thing you look, the other guy is ahead. And then you say, What's happening? You say, Come on, nothing they happen. Something they happen. Bodies they happen. We are the men that were neighboring with Bishop Oedeko. They are still alive. So these were two of them. These were two of them. Three of them began. These guys were more anointed than me. One of them took up and said, well, um, there was a door of opportunity to go to the U.S. He went there, did his PhD, became a wealthy man. But today he's oblivious. You can't find him in the radar of this generation. They started as three. Only one in China. Perhaps when he wanted to leave, even at the airport, he said something. But he could not discern the spirit. The Bible said concerning Moses, he said he saw him that was invisible. The guy was in the courts of Pharaoh, highly revered and respected. But once upon a time, something began to rule with the chambers of his soul, and he could no longer deny it. So he woke up one day and he went to Pharaoh God and said, You are no longer my God. And then the Bible said, He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Who rejects a palace to join slaves is a man that sends bodies. Who is that man? That deny the courts of a king in order to walk in the galaxy of the army where they are flogged to walk is a man that understands what. That's a man that can return from America and go to Mozambique because he can't be in the And they pay his steps into those boats where his life is defined. That day, his relevance will grow from earth into heaven. And while he walks on earth, he will stand in heaven like one of the cherubims of glory. That's why these men, even in heaven, they have a status. Because the things they live on earth, they are whispers from Zion. The life they live on earth, they are breaths from the mysteries of God. So that moment they decided to subscribe to God, they begin to the economy of the divine. So you cannot judge them unless you check them out from heaven. That's why you can't even fight them. They came to say, why did Moses take the Ethiopian woman? It's against the law of God. Are you okay? Do you know who you are talking to? And before Moses could say anything, God himself showed up. <laughs> you don't know the people that carry the jealousy of God. That time when you were sleeping, you heard God calling you to the place of prayer, but you slept. There's another man like you that felt so tired, but he knew body. So he woke up, he knelt down. He was tossing, he said, God help me. He continued like that for three years. When that man cries, it will be unjust for heaven not to respond. So you may think we are all Christians, you are a joker. The day that man stands, he stands with the witness of heaven. 
because the day you could not sacrifice him, he sacrificed many more justly. So you can't believe everything on the economy of God. When the whips of the circles of the sanctuary are weighed on the balances, you will discover that that man weighs the nation. That's why God could tell Moses, I will wipe out Israel and begin a new race with you. Moses alone was heavier than the whole Israelite put together on the waves of the altar. The strategy of kingdom relevance. We will all study the Bible. But what do you do with the problems of the spirit? You see God announce a man, that man has mastered certain dimensions in glory. He said, whoever striveth for the master is temperate in all things. The ways of the spirit, they are not so hidden, but they are hard. Only a man who is willing can be helped. But many Christians are not taught, and many are not willing. You see that what I'm sharing, all of us here have experienced it. The difference between us in this place is degrees of obedience. This is where spirituality is no longer a hidden reality. It is full to everybody. Obedience is what makes the difference. Let me tell you something. You don't need a good voice for God to use you. You don't need charisma for God to use you. You need obedience. Have you seen the people God used over the years? Every time I listen to Katukuma, I wonder what she said. But unless that woman doesn't whisper, Every demon will flee out of that hall because she has rank in heaven. She has rank. She has rank in heaven. You will not wake up and become something of a night. You will grow into it. And the first key is the commandment of the spirit. The second key is the intelligence of body. We are out of time. We are out of time. Ah, we are out of time. I don't know why God wants me to come down and share this thing to somebody here. I don't know why. But I perceive in my spirit that many of you are there. Many of you. Many of you have perfected the art of disobedience. There are most of you here that instructions of three months you have not obeyed. Many of you here. You see, I've discovered in recent times the way God uses me. He uses me to meet, to reach out to people. So most times I prepare a message, I come for a meeting, God talks a different thing until I go. Most times I pray, I come with the anointing God, and when I come for the meeting, the Holy Ghost will say, say this, say this. If I violate it, I have heard. So I discovered for a long time, and now I decided to come and follow the Holy Ghost. Tonight we are going to pray. And the first prayer we pray tonight is, Lord, what will you have me to? Because those instructions we have violated over time. Listen, it's easy to come for a minute and stir the place up and move in the spirit. That's the easiest thing to do. If you know your truth. But many are never come and they are alert. The children of Israel saw the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire for 40 years. 40 years. How is it that they are still able to disobey God? You will be thinking that, hey, if an angel appear here today, my life will change forever. You don't know what you are talking about. The only thing that can change a man is the word of God in the spirit. And only 40 years they were seeing light, canopies, and rods, pillar of light and fire. None of them was transformed. That whole generation was wiped out. The generation that entered the promised land was the generation that were taught the Torah. And that's why Moses said, as a memorial, he said, read these things to your children. Because it's the word that entered them that changed them. You will think the day an angel appeared to you, I saw Jesus when I, not in a trance, not in a dream. I saw him with my naked eyes. I saw him again at twelve. But I accepted to preach this gospel at twenty-one. Encounters are very important, but what is transported into your spirit is what makes the difference. 
those instructions you violate, they are the things that will change you. Those laws of the spirit that you disobey, they are the things that will change you. As we pray tonight, some of the burdens of God that you have, that have dissipated, you can't even feel it anymore. Most of you here used to have burdens to pray every Friday. But you don't know the last time you even remember the first Friday. It's gone. The thing has evaporated. Some of you have burdens to go to the hospital every Saturday and show love. But since this year began, you don't even remember which day is Saturday. The burden is gone. Before, if Saturday is coming, ah, you lose your peace. But now you can't remember again. Most of you have burdens to pray at night. You don't know when last you woke up at night and said thank you, Jesus. The burden is gone. But as we pray tonight, God will activate burdens again. Yes, God will activate bodies. Because we need men that will have authority to stand in this territory. The idea is not to import people from a distance. That's not the strategy of God. I told you when I began that God wants to raise an army. An army. It is the men in this territory that will change the story of this land. Men that have authority over this land will alter the story of this land. And those men are here tonight. We will also stand as we pray in the spirit. We will pray in tongues for 15 minutes. Then I will just come and release fire. I will come and release fire. And many of you, the things have lost, will begin to appear to you. Listen. When God begins to raise a man, He begins to teach him the dictates of spiritual authority. Because it is when a man walks by authority that there can be order. And when God teaches a man authority, He can take over how the meeting will go. We can come for a meeting, everybody is sleeping. And then we want the power of God to move now. And while you are sleeping, God will hit you. We have seen Him again and again. Tonight, there are three things God will do here. The first thing is that God will activate God. And He will open up most of you to encounters. You will go home and you begin to see it happen. Most of you again, the second thing God will do is that He will release fire upon your life. Fire. You will become like a burning once in your generation. And the third thing God will do is that He will release the spirit of transformation. So the places where you were bound by iniquity, you will discover that those appetites will die. You will just go and discover, ah, this lost is no longer there. This thing is gone. What has happened to me? It is the spirit of transformation. These are the three major things God will do tonight. He will stir buttons in your heart and He will activate counters. He will release fire and He will cause transformation in the life of people. These ones are things I carry like an inheritance. And I see that that's what you need. The crowd here is not so much so I didn't have you to stir myself. You needed to be instructed in the ways of God. I've seen a young lady that the Lord wants to raise as an intercessor. There's wickedness in your family. And the Lord has told you time and again that salvation is not with the men. Say there's something he wants to do with your life. This lady should be about 23 years old from what I see. And the Lord says, Where is you? Where are you? Particular. Say he wants to make you an intercessor. There have been laws. Have begun. Services are not the way you think they are. It is the Holy Ghost that regulates how these things happen. 
This is not our normal operation. Naturally, we don't operate like this. But this is what God wants to do. We will pray again. We are actually building. Because God really wants many of you to build. Because the energy of destiny, the energy of purpose is not there. There are many things you wish you would do for God, but that energy is not there. That's why God wants you to consciously build tonight. I will visit your campus again, and you will see it in a different fashion. But for you, this is what God wants to do today. As we begin to pray, losing yourself and pray. There are many things you cannot achieve unless you pray. They may anoint you, the biggest of preachers may anoint you, nothing will shift in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Just lift your hands toward him and tell the Lord you are ready. I don't want anything emotional. The power of God will begin to touch you now. Without emotion. Because these are matters of ordination. Lord, let those functions, those dimensions of God that have decided to elect you tonight, let it begin to rest on you now. You see, the Lord is anointing one of you now. It will just break upon you. Somebody's leg here will begin to burn now. I'm seeing fire. I'm seeing fire. I'm seeing fire. I'm seeing fire. Just help her carefully so that I'm seeing fire. I'm seeing fire. One of you, your stomach will begin to vibrate as if something is pushing. God is impregnating you with body. God is impregnating you with body. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch that one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One of you will begin to prophesy now. You will speak in tongues without control. You know it's not emotion. It's not emotion. The power of Jesus. Losing your tongue now. Losing your tongue. Losing your tongue. Losing your tongue. tongue. Help the brother. Losing your tongue. Losing your tongue. You, are, you want to pray now? Can we pray in a moment? Don't play with your destiny. The things that make a difference in your life are the decisions you make. And we want to pray now to gain higher energy level. So that God can have his way in our midst this evening. Come on, you want to pray in the Holy Ghost? Begin to pray now. Kapata leko pate yeta, rateto pe kaza zele to rayeta, embra yato kate kozila, esote to rayato kata leko, embra yata to to te kato, 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 yata to to te kato,
we go higher, anything the Lord drops, I will release it. And then we'll do that like five times. And then that's five. I'm sensing it. There are a few young ladies here that are prophetic people. One of you is as if you sense, you sense already. As if something is making contact with your left ear, even as the prayer is going on. It's as if you can sense it already. As if something is making contact with your left ear. And these persons I'm talking about, from when you were a child, you noticed before they happened, and several times you told your mother. If not coincidence, we are talking about, you know, and you have told your mother several times. And even your mom knows that the hand of God is upon you. But you have not had the energy to pray through in the spirit. And while this prayer is going on, one of you is caught in the left ear. Come quickly. It's time for your own activation. Just keep it calm. Keep it calm. Just stretch your hands toward me. Stretch your hands towards me. You can hear. I don't want you to have a religious encounter tonight. You see, the energy of God is beginning to touch some people in the congregation. It's not the most of Will I come my There's a young man, listen, there's a young man that a man too is about to rest upon. This person I'm, I'm talking about, you are wearing something like an ash color. And the Lord tells me you are an apostle. This person I'm speaking about, you have had an encounter with Jesus. It's a young boy. Had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. The Lord tells me tonight. There's an encounter for you. It's more like an activation. Just let your hands be in front. Now you are going to ask the Lord, listen, listen. Tell the Lord to touch you with your mouth. Thank you. Keep the people down, man. Ask the Lord to touch you. Back in the day, when we were to the families we have seen closely, these ones that we have asked, that we speak for, that we activate them to become prophetic in their success because it's part of their evolution. Right now, I live fetching. There are three things that will happen here now. Some of you will be slaves. Listen. 
Some of you will begin to cry now. Don't control it. Don't be crying. And then some of you will have a, a, a tangible vision now. In fact, somebody will see a graphic vision now. Father, I release the dimension. Touch them. Now, Lord. Now. Good. Conscious will help them so that um, people are not injured. Better to keep it calm. Touch them now, Holy Spirit. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Give them a real experience. A real experience. Real experience. Let the energy of intercession rise from their bowels now. Let the energy rise. Let the energy rise. Let the energy rise. I activate the intercessory power. Let the energy rise. Let the energy rise. Prophetic intercessors. Touch them, Holy Ghost. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. He's entering the congregation. Touch them. They will pray for you. And the one that had the account, that one will pray for you. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I'm the green attire. You've been asking the Lord to reveal himself to you that you want to know him personally. Come to me quick. Somebody with a greenish attire. I saw it like a flash. You've been asking the Lord, a young lady, reveal yourself to me. This is your time. The power of God is coming on the second one in the congregation. Touch! 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 Touch, Holy Ghost! Parasatamash! Periana Taporia Seta! Galendos Cabratini Gabasca Bradabas, Saladenes Sabria Natalia, Paronda Saparata. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from. Draw me near to where you are. <laughs> I just want to be where you are. Yeah. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. Maranas Capridas. There are three of you here. You've, saw, you've seen yourself in visions. Dressed in military attire. <laughs> dressed. I've seen two men, one lady. Seen yourself dressed in military attire. And the Lord witnesses to you tonight. Even as he anoints those he's recruiting into the army. Run to me quickly. It's not a very big meeting, so there's no point agitating everywhere. 
in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Hey. be where you are, dwelling in your breath, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your breath, that's where Listen, I've seen somebody that the Lord, the Lord sent one of the generals of the faith to you in an encounter. He gave you something like a light path. And you know that's a healing anointing. You know it's a healing anointing. You've been trusting the Lord to manifest it. Just stretch your hand before me, if you are the one. Not everybody now. Are you the one? Just stretch your hand. You don't need to come. Where you are, that anointing will begin to stay up. And your hand, your hand will begin to burn. If I speak by the Spirit of God, let the flames, the flames of healing, let it begin to rest on your hand now. Let the flames, literally, your hand will begin to pour. Father, I release the fire upon his hand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The flames come. 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 Help it. The flames, the flames. Para sambratana lastia. It's funny. I'm still a young lady that is 19 years old. 19 years old. Listen, you have seen yourself three times. You stood on the platform. You are talking on the mic, and there is a crowd of people. And one of those times, it was like white people you were talking to. This is strange. There's no preacher even in your lineage, but it's a strange ordination. Where is this person? Can you come? Fast, 19 years old. Can you imagine? Stand I will ask the Lord to set your feet on fire. So that that fire will take you to your destiny. Holy Spirit, I ask that the very circumference where she stands, let your fire begin to pour. Set her feet on fire and launch her to the nations. Holy Ghost, I release that fire. I release that fire. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You've got to help her now because the flames are becoming more intense. Elevate Kabish. Kabish, Kabish. Ariana Tabarata. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Aramama Tatalia Tata. Omara Kebo Seterira Arinata. You want to pray now? The fire of revival is about to come on somebody. You want to pray in tongues? This is the time. Kabarande Teriate. Opresete Baragabos. I want us to pray violently in the next three minutes. So that the river of fire will sweep through this place. The river of fire. The river of fire. Father, listen. I saw a vision in the spirit. And I'm seeing a girl trying to. An energy comes upon her. She is going to pull her death. As if she wants to run. She doesn't know what's happening. It's an evangelical play. It's an evangelical play. Lord, where is that one you just showed me? Lord, where is that evangelist? With a burning play. With a burning play. Let that flame descend upon her. Now, Holy Spirit. The flames. The flames. You walk to the altar. There's another person. It's coming on you like a mad woman. It's a flame of fire. It will burn the fabrics of iniquity. 
Femeletere temia tatali. They 
they are not. They don't need to shout to make noise. They are not. They have the ability to distinguish. That's the anointing of this sister. But another layer is coming again. Another layer. Another layer. Another layer. And the energy from her will spread to the left side of her hand. The energy. The energy. The energy. I conduct it by the Spirit. I conduct it by the Spirit. Let it flow now like a river. Let it flow 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 like a river. Sambra Sapatesh. Kelina Kabila Somea. Eina Nere Kaboboro Sandi. Hombre Sete. Bareli, 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 Bareli. Hey! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As you are holding hands, one of you will receive a vocal gift now. A vocal gift. And you will begin to prophesy. Now, you don't feel like it, but it's an anointing. You will begin to prophesy. Now, Lord, who is that one? I'm losing the vocal call. Let the spirit of prophecy come. That's right. Epa. Epa. It's a vocal gift. It's a vocal gift. Epa. Professor. You run on Alright, lift your hands toward heaven. I want to release something upon you before I leave. The things that have happened in this meeting is after the meeting that most of you will understand. Anything why we chose to obey the Holy Spirit. You see, there are young people. Sometimes what you need is equipping. I want to equip you now with fire. And I want to equip you now with transformation. things that will change your story forever. Forever. You know we are young people so we like so much. We do it sometimes. You are about to go back to the places where you fell to challenge the devil. The places where you fell that you were enslaved. You are about to go back to your Egypt and challenge the same devil. Because a power is about to come upon you. Just lift your hands toward him. Just stop the keyboard now. Just stop every sound. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit, this is the time to minister to your people. Right now, Lord, I ask that your light will shine upon them. And let there be activations, spiritual activations. The Lord asks me to keep it calm tonight. He wants to flow through the quietness of the atmosphere. 
Lord, I ask that you release fresh fire upon their hearts and activate their altars. And I ask, Lord, let the weight of transformation begin to descend. Father, right now, let that wind begin to blow. <laughs> let the wind begin to blow. <laughs> the angels of my ordination begin to touch them now. Touch them and activate them. Some of you, your hands will begin to burn as a witness. Some of you will begin to drop where you are standing. You just drop. You won't know why you drop down. At least two of you will scream because something will stare from your inside. It's an activation. Right now, Holy Spirit, I open them to encounters. Begin to minister to them now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. The hand of God becomes stronger. The hand of God. 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 Touch! Ushers! Touch! The hand of God. The hand of God. I don't want people injured, so be careful to watch out. Touch, Holy Spirit! Patekoraskira, Baraskamash, Vandela Sibria Kaboash, Talikamos Kabej, Ledizo Vradiva, Parindas Cabridados, Rakabina Soria, Peria, Soria, Peria, Soria, Peria. Touch them, Lord. Oh my God. The fire is coming now. The fire. The fire is coming now. The fire. Revivalist. 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 The fire is coming now. Revivalist. Arise. 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 The fire. The fire. Come in. Arise. 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 Revivalist. My God. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. With the coals of fire. With the coals of fire. With the coals of fire. Revivalist. Revivalist. Arise. Arise. Where are your comments? Where are your comments? You can give me keyboard now. The angels have gone ahead of me. Give me sound now. The angels have gone ahead. Fire, fire, fire. Receive comments. 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 Receive them. Receive them. Karamantara Baparas. Wow. I stare the water.
Somebody in the congregation, listen. You shining upon now. You are in the congregation. The light of God. It is somewhere by the left hand side. From where I'm standing there by the left. The light of God is shining upon you now. God wants to separate you unto himself. Holy Spirit. That one is. Right now, I stand in time as a witness. And as I stretch my hand, I ask, Lord, that you stir that fire now. Stir that fire. 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 That's Mr. Please. Come on to our Stir that fire. Stir that fire. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The energy is still being transferred. Although that sister fell down, but she's not the one I'm talking about. The energy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch! Touch! That's right. Touch! Bring that brother. Holy fire, holy fire, burn upon my heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you hold your hands, just be sensitive now. Just be sensitive. You are about to receive a spiritual substance. You are about to receive a spiritual substance. Holy Spirit, I ask that you run through them. Let your light run through them. Never again. Let your light run through them. If you are distracted, at this time, that's your business. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're about to receive something for heart. So focus on Jesus now. Tonight, the Holy Ghost wants to walk against our religious protocol. Now, the Lord is going to be depositing tangible spiritual substances. Some of you gifts of the Spirit will be activated now. Some of you graces will be released upon you now. And even as I speak now, the hand of God rests upon you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The hand of God. The Holy Spirit makes it happen according to His counsel. Let the weight of glory begin to descend. See, some of you, your knee will begin to bend like this. You can't hold it. The weight will become strong. You will go down, you will come up. You will go down, you will come up. It's a weight of glory. It's descending like the dew of the heaven. Like the dew of the heaven. Like the dew of the heaven. Let the weight of glory rest upon you now. Let it rest. Let it rest. Touch the heart. Touch. 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 Okay, that's right. That's right. It comes now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One of you is receiving the grace, the gift of counsel. 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 Help them. Help them. The gift of counsel. 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 The spirit of wisdom overtakes you now. Overtakes you. Overtakes you. Somebody is receiving the gift of prophecy again. The gift of prophecy. Your vocal cords are losing now. They are losing now. They are losing. They are losing. They are losing. They are losing. I lose the cord. 
I lose the call. I lose the call. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody is going to sense the sensation of oil flowing down your head now. It's the gift of healing. The gift of healing. The gift of healing. The gift of healing. It's a gift. It's a gift. Don't be distracted. Let it flow. Let it flow. And the Lord causes everything that pertains to you to prosper. You have served the Lord your God. He now blesses your bread and your water. He removes sickness from the midst of thee. He fulfills the years of your life. Right now, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. None of you shall be barren. None of you shall miscarriage. In any area of your life. None of you shall desire your mate. The Lord blesses your going out and your coming in. Mm. I'm seeing virtue come upon a lady. Virtue. I'm seeing virtue. Virtue. She's just descending on the lady like a canopy. Virtue. 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 Help them. I'm seeing virtue descend. Virtue. Literal virtue. Virtue. I'm seeing a young man of folly. 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 The spirit of foolishness. A spirit of waste and foolishness. By the hand of God, I bind that spirit. I bind that spirit. Your prophetic destiny is hereby let loose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak over everybody here tonight. I ask that the Lord bless you with his presence. I ask that the Lord bless you with his anointing. I ask that the Lord bless you with his grace. I surround you tonight with wisdom, with faith, and with glory. And I declare that every area of limitation is hereby shattered. Between now and seven days, you will see a tangible change. If it's a sickness, I command it to bow in the name of Jesus. If it's a circumstantial challenge, I command it to bow in the name of Jesus. You are leaving this meeting flooded with testimonies. The things that were a struggle, they are here by the name of Jesus. Those of you that have been around one mountain for too long, right now I come with the grace of speed and acceleration. And I lose you. And I give you a prophetic push to the next phase of your life. In the name of Jesus. I declare the lines fall onto you in pleasant places. I declare you have a goodly heritage. That scripture becomes your portion from tonight. In the Praise name the of Lord. Jesus. Yeah, Most of you that suffered in it. It's such a great honor to it's be here this morning to share with us very briefly the word of the Lord. I uh, don't take it for granted to have this honor one more time to be a blessing to God's people. Can you just lift your hands toward heaven? Talk to the Lord. Just whisper something to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Say something to the Lord this morning. this privilege that we have 
yet again to come under the ambience of your spirit and receive instructions and perspective consistent with the realization of our ordinations on the face of the earth father we ask this morning that even as we hear from you we will not only be educated and inclined unto spiritual realities but will be granted access penetration and ability to demonstrate them and to fulfill your eternal counsel on the face of the earth thank you precious holy spirit Oh, pray and ask with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. I know we've been here for quite some time. We've spent some time already. So I will not, I will not be talking for so long. I will just be bringing us a brief charge. And then we'll pray. Just give us a brief charge. Maybe for 15 minutes, and then we'll take time and pray for another 10 minutes. Then we'll release the spirit of grace upon every one of us so that we can walk in the reality of that which will be shared this morning. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Although, by reason of our frame, our design, our context and our dimension we are compelled to give expression to the gospel through our vocabulary through words but what we need to understand is that the gospel is not necessarily in essence ontologically a function of words the gospel is the life of God communicated by his spirit but it's impossible for you to live in this frame without giving expression to spirit realities by words. Words become the most essential medium of communicating spiritual realities. So we are sentenced to using words to communicate the gospel. But the gospel not necessarily is not necessarily a function of words. So Paul said the gospel of God is the power of God unto salvation. So when we speak to people, when we communicate the gospel, we are actually trying to relate the power of God to the people. So it goes beyond you understanding articulately the things that we communicate. The gospel becomes real. The gospel becomes experiential. When we are able to power that brings salvation, and the gospel becomes profitable when you are able to receive that power not just the understanding there are lots of people who are having crisis in life today not because they lack the understanding of the tenets of the gospel they understand the pillars of redemption they understand the essence of the gospel but the problem and the crisis of their life is their inability to touch the power and the life of the gospel so to them especially for those of us who are young it becomes a function of cerebral inclination so we come we display our intelligence and understanding of doctrinal exegesis but our life is not in conformity to the things that we know so in order to be delivered from the crisis of life Paul summarized the scope of the gospel in one word he said it is the power of God unto salvation so if you've not made contact with that power no matter what you know doctrinally you have not understood the gospel because in spiritual essence the proof that you have understood the reality is that first of all the consciousness of that reality is formed and secondly that reality begins to transform you so knowledge in the spirit is actually consciousness that results in transformation knowledge is not just a function of mental exertion so this morning we want to look at the help of god and if truly the help of god is communicated somebody here will receive help for his present crisis and circumstance and i believe you are that one person that will make contact with the help of god jesus came and gave a manifesto about the gospel and they said 
that is come to preach the gospel and Jesus began to explain he was not saying different things but he was just trying to relate the gospel for different context he said for the blind I have come to open their eyes that is power Jesus was only telling us the power dimension of the gospel he said for the deaf I have come to unstop the deafness of his ear is the same thing he's talking about so whatever your crisis in life is if the gospel comes the gospel becomes the solution for the sinner the gospel is salvation for the sick the gospel is health for the helpless the gospel is help for the one who is walking in perpetual poverty and penury the gospel is the wealth of God so that was the manifesto that Jesus gave and if we want to look at it in another context or language the gospel is the help of God that ability of God that brings you out of your quagmire that enablement of the Spirit of God that removes you from the crisis of your life not just to give you meaning in time but to give you eternal relevance because you are not truly saved unless you are eternally saved God is not just interested in giving you bread and water because everything you eat and drink we end in time so when we are talking about the help of God we are talking about a dimension of the walking of the Spirit of God that makes a man relevant in time and in eternity the apostles told Jesus they said we've left everything to follow you what is in this thing for us and Jesus said no man that follows me we lack not in this world or in the world to come so the help of God is the power of God that gives meaning to the life of a man both in time and in eternity it's not just about healing the man from sickness it's about giving the man eternal relevance the help of God is what every one of us needs if you see anybody doing anything that is beyond the boundaries of mortality know that that man is helped you know we are in a world today where people deliberately build systems in order to deify themselves they separate humankind from the help that they accessed in God so that they become dependent on them that's why a lot of people don't know the gospel you will see 10,000 people surrounding only one man if those people understand the gospel something will happen the man will be significant because it's worthy to honor them that labor in the kingdom but beyond the significance of the man everybody will know God for themselves so they will no longer look up to man for help but God will truly become their source so the reason that man is important is not because the man is their papa the reason the man is important is because the man becomes a channel through which they can access God that's when a man has received the help of God but many have no understanding of the help of God the worst part is that we even become religious having no understanding of how to access the dimensions of God having no understanding of how to access the things that are freely given to us by God so people do all kinds of things hoping that by doing those things God will be moved do you know who God is can you move God the reason you are even here you know somebody has a challenge maybe his hand broke or he lacks money or he lacks something and then he wants to do something to provoke God that you even know that you have a need was granted you that you had understanding in the first place was granted you that you had emotion in the first place to know the need for love was because God gave you the emotion so it brings you to a place of assurance of the love and the faithfulness of God that's when men are able to access 
the possibilities of God. But many are not taught. So we live in a life of confusion and contradiction. But like my brother said, he said this morning that the Lord we lighten our understanding so that the scales will be lifted up. What is the help of God? The help of God is a cure to your crisis. If you are still in crisis, you may do all the religious route. If you are in crisis, you may do all the ordinances. But if God has not supernaturally brought you a visitation to take you out of that crisis, you may not have accessed the help of God. What is the help of God? The help of God is that impute of the divine that not only solves your problem, but makes you a problem solver. What is the help of God? The help of God is that ability of God that works in a man and gives him capacity beyond the frailty of mortality. I'll give you two or three scriptures that reveal to us what the help of God really means. In Exodus chapter 3, God met with Moses. Now, these were people who were sentenced to Christ's captivity and everything that is called hope was lost. You know, when you've been in captivity for more than 200 years, the people that were in captivity trusting God for hope, all of them have died. 40 years have passed many times. So many generations have died. All they had left was hope. Hope beyond the boundaries of mortality. So the only thing that kept them going was that one day God will visit us. One generation will recite it and hand it over to another generation. And they kept reciting it. So a point came when they were at the mercies of the Egyptians. So much so that the Egyptian Pharaoh will give a decree that if they give birth to a male child, seize him and kill him. And then these helpless people will do nothing about it. Have you come to a situation in your life where all hopes are not just lost? But the circumstance begin to torture and torment you. It's a time where you need the help of God. It's not just like you are having need for money now. But poverty becomes a tormentor over your life. Such was the condition of the Israelites. Have you been in that addiction? Where you are carrying out that addiction and you are crying. Or the moment you are just done, it looks as if you are picked from the mud. Even you yourself, you are ashamed. This is not somebody caught you in an act. Nobody caught you in that act. But you have come to a point where you disdain yourself. That means this addiction is no longer a problem. It has become a tormentor over your life. Such was the condition of the Israelite. A man in that condition is the man that is in desperate need of the help of God. Have you come to a point where there is no light over your circumstance anymore? At first you thought maybe you will call one or two uncles, they will help you. But you now get to a point where the uncles that should help you becomes the one that want to sell you out. A young lady of 16 years who needs to go to school and the uncle is telling him to get married to a man of 45 because the man promised him a land of money the young lady is helpless there is nobody to cry to because both parents are dead that's when a person needs the help of god but you may not you may not take advantage of the help of god you may take the help of god for granted until you come to a desperate circumstance where your your crisis becomes a torment but the reason we share the gospel is so that men can be wise to build systems, spiritual systems around their lives, not to get to that point where they are helpless. Because it begins and is a slippery slope. 
he glides you into that point of no return so that those thoughts and feelings you are having now you will quickly access help so that those things don't become an addiction that's why we teach subjects like this not because we are looking for somebody who is in a helpless condition but we are telling the man who is currently in a position of safety how to keep his ground because if he doesn't keep his ground a point may come when he will fall to a situation where he will be eternally helpless until God helps that's why the young lady thinks it's about parties on Friday she doesn't understand where she's going to she doesn't know that parties can result in meeting a strange man and it can result to HIV or it can result to pregnancy and in the space of three months a young lady who was blossoming with light and hope for the future becomes a depressed person and suicide becomes an alternative if that person understand the slippery intelligence of the demonic to bring him or her to a helpless position he will grab the help of God God comes to help because there is no hope for humanity apart from God God comes to help because with mortality is doom and damnation so wise men are people that access the help of God the condition of the Israelites in Egypt is a reflection of the possibilities that man can fall into if he walks by his senses it's a possibility that man can come to if he does not take advantage of the help of God but he begins to rely on the help that he can receive from man remember the Bible said woe unto him that trusted in the arm of flesh he said because the arm of flesh is a hopeless condition in our everyday contemporary language Israel on their own migrated to Egypt but they never understood that they were walking into a trap the things that you, were walk, you are walking into today may look juicy but it is important for you to be wise never to take a step unless you have heard and received direction from God because that thing that looks like help today tomorrow may become your grave there are many young people that are making decisions as serious as marriage they are making those decisions based on assumptions and feelings you meet a young girl say I had peace I had peace and you want to commit 50 years of your life because you you felt what you call peace and then after five years every day becomes a night of sorrow because he doesn't understand that there is a help that everyone must hold on to not before you get into crisis not after you get into crisis but even before you get into crisis it's called the help of god that's what israel was crying for for over 400 years that ability of god that they did not ask for at first all they needed was bread why didn't they cry and ask god for intervention when they had that opportunity now the bread that they had became the bread of sorrow so you walk to death and what you eat is just to sustain you so that you have energy to walk a point comes in a man's life where everything that comes to his life is to keep him surviving but he's surviving in the midst of sorrow that's a man that has not taken advantage of the help of God every one of us needs the help of God and we must learn desperately how to access it this morning I want to show you three ways very simple ways of accessing the help of God because if I begin to open scriptures to show you show you different kinds of circumstances that men find themselves either because they led themselves through it or they were carried into it it may take us the whole day I don't have time to to expound on the conditions that Joseph found himself a young lad of 17 years who was sold into a foreign land a diligent guy trying to please his master and suddenly the demonic woman comes to destroy the destiny of this boy that come and lie with me if he's not a man that knows the help of God he would have gone in with Potiphar's wife and at best he would have been a chief chef all his life walking in the kitchen of Potiphar but that was supposed to be a prince that will rule a nation 
the reason most of you call what you call blessing is because you have no assurance of the help of God. So you are in a little condition that puts you under pressure. And then the devil brings a suggestion. And then you jump at it. You jump at it, not knowing that it's a trap. Moses would have been the most favored servant in Potiphar's house by sleeping with the wife. He looks simple, but he's in disguise. Why was he able, a servant who was sold, why was he able to stand before this woman and say, I cannot commit this evil before God? He was not even so concerned about Potiphar. He knew that what will keep him in Egypt and give him life and a future was his relationship with God. That's a man that knows the help of God. They were to throw him into prison. The woman threatened him, but he ran away. So it is better to leave Potiphar's house where you have a decent shelter and you have food to eat every day. Why don't you tell yourself, well, it's just once. Maybe I just live with her today and then she will leave me. And then stay there and have food. You are leaving that place to prison where nobody will ask after you. And he was in the prison for 14 years. Most of you, you jump out of your right standing with God and you jump at offers that even your conscience, as weak as your conscience is, tells you that this one does not please the Father. And you go ahead. It's because you don't know the help of God. Joseph knew the help of God. So when they brought him what you will call help, that we violate his standing with God, he said it is better to go to prison than to receive this. Even if God will not intervene, I will be in prison with an assurance that God is with me. You have not gotten to that point, you don't know the help of God. They tell you, okay, come quickly, they are going to close the portal now, but um, this is what will happen. Just go, come with us to this club, and then there are these young guys that are coming. They'll give you this money. Just pay your school fees, and you say, Lord, Lord. Then the Holy Ghost begins to on your soul. On your soul. Then you act as if you are not hearing the Holy Ghost again. You are dressing, you are baiting, you are talking quick, quick. You are hearing music because you, you don't want to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, don't go, don't go, don't go. You are just doing everything quick. They are calling you, say, yes, I'm coming. You go until you get yourself to a point where you can no longer hear the whispers of Zion. Before a man receives the help of the devil, he consciously shut down the help of God. That's why you went to carry the money. Because you thought that you will sort this thing out and pay later. The Holy Ghost said, no. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. You are shutting the help of God. Many either do not know the help of God or they violate the protocol of accessing the help of God. For Joseph, there was no future in disobeying Potiphar's wife. But he would prefer to have that assurance he had with God and to go into prison. And there was never a time where he lamented. The visitation of God came after many years. But the guy was better with God than to align with the world system and violate what kept him with his God. The help of God is a life. It's a relationship. It's a confidence that we have with God that makes us to choose even suffering. Momentary suffering as against the offering of this world. The help of God is an assurance that we have in our spirit that makes us even to suffer in this world even though there doesn't look like a hope but to rather suffer and wait on him than to accept what the world has to offer. That was what Moses suddenly had when the Bible said he was come of age. The Bible said he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Why will a man reject the courts of Pharaoh? He has discovered a new economy. That economy was not leading him to a higher palace. It was leading him to dwell with people in bondage. But the Bible said he chose rather to suffer affliction because he had respect for the recompense of the reward. The help of God is a knowing that a man enters into that defies his circumstances. It doesn't matter what you will go through. Paul said, for the which cause, 2 Corinthians 4.16, for the which cause we faint 
not. That means when you choose the help of God, sometimes it will lead you into crisis. Choosing the help of God sometimes may lead you into fire. But Paul said, for the which cause we faint not. He said, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. He said, for our light affliction, which are but for a moment. Did you study the afflictions of Paul? Paul was flogged many times. There were times when he was stoned to death and they allowed him because they thought he had died. There were times when he went without food and water for 14 days. He calls that thing light affliction because the help of God brings a man to a place where he judges life from immortality. He doesn't judge, judge life from the frailty of the flesh anymore. A man chooses affliction instead of aligning with the world. Paul calls it light affliction. And he said all of those things that happen to him is for a moment. I don't understand how stoning a man to death is light. And I don't understand how 14 days without food and fear of shipwreck is a moment. But that is a man that knows the hand of God. Our light affliction. How did he survive this thing? He said, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are unseen. That means Paul judges life from immortality. The reason you easily get under pressure and you make decisions is because your confidence and your motivations are captured in things that are working on the economy of flesh. So if you don't get that in on time, you think you are losing. Or your friends may think that things are wrong with you. But a man who truly is dead in God, circumstances don't define him. He defines circumstances. He has a confidence that is beyond the boundaries of mortality. Why we look not at the things which are seen? Are you able to look away from the dress? Are you able to look away from the hunger? Are you able to look away from what men say? And stand with God. The Bible said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. Do you know what it looks like to be 75 years and everybody in the community know your wife is barren and suddenly you come and change your name and say I am no longer assumed father I am the father of many nations and my wife is now the mother of kings you have no child you are 75 years that's a man that knows the help of God time doesn't define his confidence chance and luck doesn't define his confidence there is an immortal thing that he beholds that's a man that does not look at the things which are seen the things that are eternal that was the lifestyle that defined the patriarchs you call them men of exploit but you don't know the waters they passed through you don't know how many times they went to the bottom of Hades and came back because they trusted in God the reason our generation can't do so much is because we have too many plan B's we can't wait on God we can't stand with God every little pressure we shift down because we don't know the help of God. The outward man perishes. I may lose my certificate. But I will not sleep with this lecturer. To get an A. I better not graduate. But I will stand with God. And you don't know. Certificates don't make men. I know many first class people. Who are looking for job for the past five years. Men don't make men. In this kingdom. Only God makes men. I had a friend whose father was one of the biggest directors in this country. While we were still serving, they were waiting for him to graduate so that he would become a deputy manager in Arik. Without experience. He didn't even do anything as touching aer aer aeronautic engineering or aerospace. Not even study accounting that you say he has business intelligence. But he had a man. Two weeks before we passed out, the father died. All the promises he had sank in the ocean. That was when he started learning the way of help. It was too late. Because the things that needed to be built on his inside. To make him rugged enough to defy circumstances. He didn't yield himself to those operations. Many don't know the help of God. The proof that you know the help of God. Is captured in the decisions that you make. It's defined by your lifestyle. 
three people come to marry them and they are checking their their job their profession and then when he finds the one that is a doctor or an engineer or who is working with chevron he now say i have peace i have peace you are not wise he says it's not given to man that walk into order his steps because everything you decisions you will make will be based on information and fact and reason but your fact cannot define tomorrow because tomorrow is outside the boundaries of the informations that you have it's only the spirit that is eternal in nature that can judge the future and tell you to decide now because he has traveled into your end you choose a man because he walked with chevron but you don't know his lifespan on earth is remaining three years the one you rejected today because he's wearing slippers is three years from now that god wants to promote him because help does not come from the north the south the east or the west it comes from the lord and by the seasons of his ordination, the windows that revolve over the circumference of his destiny will open in three years. And that's when the angels will be mobilized from heaven. So your life will be defined with him after three years. And that man has 50 more years to live. But you choose the chevron guy because you, you judge by the sight of the eye. You don't know the help of God. The reason you see men go through the wilderness and leave everything that man calls duty is because they know the help of God. It's an ability in God that men have confidence in. And they are willing to yield themselves to those abilities to define their essence. Our light affliction, they are for a moment. He said, though they work for us an exceeding weight of glory. That's why Paul can go to a city even though he knows that it will be stoned. That's why Paul can be stoned to death and he rises up after the saints pray for him and resurrect him back to life and then he will stand up with those injuries and he say let's go to the next city what do you mean don't you take breaks are there no holidays in your work there is important in his heart he said necessity is laid upon me woe unto me if i preach not the gospel so so long as there is bread on his nose tree there is an assignment that must be fulfilled for that assignment, he's willing to drop his legal certificate and walk from street to street in wilderness and in places of lack and want so that the gospel can be preached. That's when life gains definition. The immortals don't judge you by the number of cars that you have. They judge you by the amount of life you pour on the altar for the fulfillment of that which God wrote concerning you before the foundations of the world. But a man will never go in the direction of purpose and calling unless he understands the burdens in the heart of the father and he has assurance in the help of god and on the strength of that assurance he can make the sacrifice in the food of life to see that that thing comes to pass many christians don't know the help of god they think the help of god is what they prophesy on altars give and then tomorrow you will receive a blessing it's a deception of the age men who know the help of god they don't give because there's a promise they give because there is a faithful god he said, cast thy bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. For you know not the evil that will come upon the earth. The people teaching you the principle of soul seed sowing. They are giving you that principle because they tell you there's a return. But here is a man who is still giving to seven and eight. Even though there is a possibility that the earth will be destroyed. What then is his assurance? There is a God that defines and holds the pillars of the earth. So even if the earth fails... Even if the earth can no longer produce seed, there is a God that keeps the boundaries, the pillars of the earth. So I give because there is a God. That's a man that can give for 10 years. There is no reward. But he doesn't even remember the last thing he gave. For him, giving is a life. So when he gives, he's excited. He's not checking what God gave him because he gave not this one. I know there's a place of counting your blessings and naming them one by one. But for men of purpose who have seen the vent of eternity, who have touched the powers of the age to come. They don't count those blessings. They are the blessing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. difficult for me to teach the word of God because many people they are called their, their perspective have been bastardized 
So you can no longer teach people how to have eternal value. The system has been so corrupt that men are like princes of Babylon. Everything we do is informed by the wisdom and the intelligence of Babylon. It becomes difficult. They pervert the scripture. They bend the word of God to fulfill their appetite, their proclivities and their inclination. So when men are in church doing so much, they are becoming more like the world because they are walking by the wisdom of Babylon. It's difficult now to tell people the things that have immortal significances. You don't know how to tell men now that life is not lived on this side of the divide. That everything we are doing here is an airtime for eternity. They can't hear it anymore because their confidence, their understanding have been bastardized. Why would a man go to the cross? What is the benefit? Why would Paul be going to Jerusalem? They said this man, it says seven men spoke to him by the spirit and they said do not go to Jerusalem. He said but he has a confidence. There's something God told him that he must be a witness to Jesus in Jerusalem. A prophet shows up, carries his belt and said the man that has this, he will be bound. Why would he still go to Jerusalem? These are men that have the power to alter the constellation. They can shift the foundations of the world because for them, life is no longer about personal advantage. Life is about fulfilling the will of the Father. You come to a city, 30 churches in one city because that's the city where there's money. How many churches are in Meduguri? Why would nobody go there? Is God not willing to reach out to the souls there? Nobody hears vision about Afghanistan. Nobody hears vision about Medukuri. Everybody starts church. He's going to Abuja and Lagos. And we say we are men of faith. Bastardized. All of us do things for gain. The Bible says, Woe unto him that thinks gain is godliness. There is gain in God, but gain is not our focus. What I'm sharing may not be for all of you. This one is for the few that are called to walk life from the womb of the spirit. Some of you, your place is in the political corridor. I'm not talking to you. God will help you there. But I'm talking to the ones that sense in their heart that there is a body to do something in the heart of the father. For such ones, even if they are in politics, they will die for truth. Those are men that can really move the hand of God and uninstall the foundations of principalities in territories. Why do you think we are praying in our thousands but we cannot affect the territory? Because there is no stature and texture in our prayer. There are no men of sacrifice anymore. But concerning the apostles, 12 men, the Bible said, these be the men that turn their walls upside down how will they have so much power what informed the texture of their work with god they know the economy of help so for them life is not about advantage in time we need to be helped we don't have men of bodies anymore we are religious people are in all forms of storms and caricature in the church. When was the last time you prayed for that which is in the heart of the Father? When was the last time your prayer was not about you but about God? It's a definition of where you are. A lost generation. A lost generation. The problem is that some of us we've never seen the Lord. You don't know how God bleeds. If you have seen the heart of the Father, your life will change. 
the Bible said the reason Moses was able to reject Egypt was because he saw him that was invincible. If you see the heart of God, your life will change. If you know how the heart of Jesus bleeds for a generation, you will know that it's a sin to live for yourself. Men that have callings on their lives, live him for pleasure. Men that have bodies, they deplete those bodies for needs, petty needs. We live like animals. It's only the animal that lives for his appetite. He say a man that is in honor, that knoweth not, is like the beast of the feet that perishes. Even the gospel, men preach the gospel now for money. For money, the gospel, a hallowed eternal committer to the hand of man. What Jesus himself was doing, that he committed to us. A man preaching the gospel, not aware that every time he's standing, he's standing in the place of Jesus. He preaches the gospel for bread and wine. That's the level that our confidence and our faith have been bastardized. This morning you will cry for the help of God because many of us are far. <laughs> yeah. I want to pray for a few people. I, obviously, I can't go into my message. I want to pray for a few people. I want to make a fresh commitment to God and say their lives are being placed on the altar. God, do with me that which you will. Those are the people I came for this morning. You are part of such people. Come to the front. I'm not talking to everybody. of life show us the true essence of living oh that the reality and the reasons why we came into time will become something that is real even in our cognitive minds oh God look upon us this mercy this morning with mercy and grant us access to the portal where divine help is accessed. Lord, show us mercy. Grant us help, O oh God. Grant us help. Let our generation, O oh God, not be carried away by the things of the world. Let our eyes, O oh God, be fixed upon the mountain where our help is situated. Help, 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 help. Ah, te 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 te, e te 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 te, e te 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 te, ike patogi, anteke para, eso so so so, araye kopro, 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 kopro. Let men and women of conviction rise, oh God. Let men and women with 
through conviction rise that our faith will not be baptized that our belief will not be on shallow things let our gaze perpetually be fixed on eternity it kopenate rute o sablani ata in the name of Jesus the Bible said the word of God is a dishonor that dishonor the very intent of man the word of God has been revealed to us this morning and you know where you are you know the state of your heart right now can you begin to make adjustment by the help of the holy ghost genuinely it's not out of emotion what the lord wants is your will not your emotion what he wants is your will because it is in the chamber of your will that decisions are made and decisions are sustained when you submit your will to him he gives you his own and you'll be able to stand talk to him talk to him hey, hey. a fresh commitment to God this morning make a fresh commitment to God spirits will never take any man serious until there is a commitment it is when you make a deliberate commitment commit your will and then they become powerful around you the Holy Ghost will become powerful around you if he sees your commitment make a fresh commitment to the lord to consistently gaze upon him for help you will not come under pressure that will change your mind from your conviction In the name of Jesus, you don't make commitment outside of your mind. You consciously make commitment. I want you to speak in tongues. I want you to talk to God in the word that you know. Tell him that as from this day, if he will help you, this is how your life will go. And then we will pray for grace to abide by that. It's just you and God. These are not, this moment don't come all the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you hear, O oh God, and grant help. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Father, look upon us. We bring ourselves as offering before you this morning. We bring ourselves as offering upon your altar. Lord, if you will kindle the fire, we will burn. 
we mean business with you lord we want to be real with you and therefore we make fresh commitment to you this morning by the help of your spirit and we ask for grace to apply every heart that is genuinely repenting here this morning let your help not be far from such a heart every soul that is turning to you completely this morning let your help not be far from such an individual and lord as a congregation as a per corporate person i will ask of oh god that you will be mighty in our midst thank you father in jesus name we pray Go back to your seat. Hey, I keep myself away so you can use me. I keep myself away. Hey, I keep myself away. I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video, and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ. Ask your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.